Scandinavia, a place where the mist clings to the mountains, shadows dwell in the dense forest, and legends are as alive as the landscape itself. From Sweden's evergreen woods to Norway's rugged fjords, myths are woven into the very soil. Each of these tales speak of creatures more than mythical, their guardians, tricksters, hunters, and spirits from the ancient lore. Some help, other haunt, and many remain unseen. But all have left their mark on these lands, on, on those brave enough to wander into their domains. Welcome to my channel, Timeless Tales with Ophelia, and I'm your host, Ophelia Adler. Today we'll be doing something different from our normal book discussion videos. I wanted to share with you some folklores that I've been enjoying from the Scandinavian countries where I'm from. And I hope you will enjoy these as much as I do during the spooky season. So let's get into them. Our journey begins with the Swedish Skogsrå, known to locals as the Lady of the Forest. First documented in the folklore of medieval Sweden around the 13th century, the Skogsrå is described as a stunning woman from the front with golden hair, deep green eyes and a gaze that can hold even the bravest man captive. But if you manage to catch her from behind, you would see something altogether different. A hollowed out back resembling a dead tree. A mark that she is not an ordinary woman. This Kuksru is an elusive creature, said to protect the forest's delicate balance and to reward or punish those who venture into her domain. Hunters who earn her favor might find themselves with an uncanny gift for the hunt, bringing down even the most elusive prey. But this blessing comes with a price. They must stay faithful to her, for if they betray her trust or speak of her presence, they risk losing all sense of direction, forever wandering lost in the woods. It's said that some hunters vanish without a trace, leaving only whispers that the Skogsrå had taken them as her own. In recent decades, sightings of the Skogsrå have dwindled, but the occasional tale of a strange enchanting figure leading hikers deeper into the Swedish forest continues. Many villagers in remote areas leave small offerings to her before venturing out, believing that a simple gesture of respect will protect them from her wrath. The Skogsrå is just one of many Roa spirits that dwells in Scandinavia, each bound to a specific part of the natural world. The word Roa itself translates to keeper or guardian, and these spirits watch over the realms with both benevolence and fury, depending on how they treated. Each Ro has its own personality and rules, though they all share the same deep connection to the land. On Norway's mountain's peak, you might find the Beris Ro, the mountain guardian, who protects her craggy cliffs and tunnels, those who wander into her mountains uninvited risk strange accidents or might even be led into caverns that closes behind them. Just as the Skogsrå, the Berisrå, may choose to help or hinder depending on how she perceives those who enter her domain. In the quiet depth of lakes and fjords, dwells the Sjöro, or lake spirit, a mysterious roar 
who, like Netkin, that we will talk about later, can be both beautiful and treacherous. Known for luring fishermen with promises of abundant catches, the Hero may bless or curse those who enter her waters, especially if they disrespect her realm. Offerings of coins or flowers are often made along lake shores to keep her favor. And finally, we have Hafsro, the protector of meadows and fields, especially livestock, often appearing as a peaceful spirit to the shepherds and farmers. Some say she blesses grazing animals, bringing them fertility and health. But she can also bring sickness if her presence is ignored. Each Rua has her own dominion, guarding Scandinavian mountains, lakes, fields and forests, reminding those who walk this land that every part of the nature has a keeper, and the respect of that natural world might just be the only thing standing between you and their wrath. There is also a law to keep humans from having sexual intercourse with a roar, and if discovered, you could be sentenced to death. Deeper into the Nordic folklore lies the tale of Nekin, the river spirit, whose origin traces back to the 16th century Sweden and Norway. Nekin is often depicted as a lonely, sorrowful figure playing haunting music by rivers and streams, his violin notes filling the air with an ethereal beauty that is impossible to ignore. Some legends even describe Nekin as having the appearance of a young man, beautiful yet tragic, with eyes full of sorrow. Nekin's music is both a gift and a curse. He draws travelers, particularly the lonely and heartbroken, to the water's edge, where they find themselves so entranced that they cannot look away. The enchanted listener begins to wade into the water, following the music, sinking deeper and deeper and deeper until they disappear beneath the surface, lost to the river forever. It's said Nekin himself is trapped by his own sorrow, condemned to lure others in a tragic cycle he cannot break. To protect against Nekin's allure, villagers would throw silver coins or even iron nails into the water as offerings. These offerings were said to keep Nekin at bay, or even to distract him, giving travelers a safe passage by the water. Stories of Nekin sightings became less common often at the 19th century, but even today some fishermen and hikers claim to hear a faint violin music drifting across the lakes at night. In Swedish folklore, when someone drowned, it was often attributed to Nekin with the phrase Nekin tog henne, meaning Nekin took her. It was believed that Nekin would pull unsuspecting people, especially women, into the water by appearing as a loved one, a beautiful piece of jewelry, or even an inviting light glimmering from the depths. Since many people in rural Sweden couldn't swim during these times, the sudden pull of the water currents could quickly lead to drowning, and Nekin's music was said to enchant them to their doom before they had chance to resist. In addition to his violin playing, Nekin was known for the phenomenon called Nekabet, or Nekin's Bite. Folk tales say that the bite from Nekin, inflicted as punishment on those he captured, will leave a wound that would never fully heal, a mark from which the person could never escape. 
In some cases, drowned bodies would appear hauntingly pale, and it was said that Nitkin had drained them from their blood, leaving behind these ghostly, lifeless bodies as a reminder of his power and the dangers of the depth. Before the violin reached Sweden in the 16th century, Nitkin was believed to be playing a fiddler, an older string instrument similar to a lute or a lyre. This fits more older descriptions, suggesting he might have played whatever instrument from most culturally significant at that time. By the time the violin introduction, his haunting melodies became associated with its somber tone, adding a layer of sorrow and mystique to the Necken legend that has endured for centuries. Next, we turn to the ancient mountains of Norway, where tales of trolls have lived for millennia. Trolls are one of the oldest beings in Nordic mythology, their stories spanning across Norway, Sweden and Iceland. They are depicted as massive, rugged creatures with skin as tough as stone and strength unmatched by any mortal. Trolls are tied closely to the natural world. They live in caves, blends into the mountains, and some even believe they are the mountains, turned to stone by the first ray of sunlight. In many Nordic villages, trolls were seen as fierce, unpredictable beings. If a troll felt that its territory was encroached upon by humans, it would respond with terrifying anger, throwing boulders, or even causing avalanches to ward off trespassers. Though trolls usually avoid humans, they are known to steal livestock or even children, a practice local feared most. In some part, of Norway, villagers left stone marks with iron or placed thorny branches around their fields, hoping to deter trolls from wandering too close. These legends became part of every life, and people even crafted their homes to avoid disturbing trolls' territories. While troll sightings have faded over the centuries, some hikers still report feeling a heavy, unsettling presence in the mountains at dusk, a feeling that something far older than humans are still watching them. It's also said that trolls are the reason behind some of the islands we have in our lakes. It's said that these big boulders that the trolls were tossing would create some of the islands that we now have. In Denmark and Sweden, travelers often speak of Lyktgubbe or Lantern Man. He would use eerie orbs of lights floating above marshes and bogs, appearing as harmless, gentle lights that beckon travelers forward. But following a Lyktgubbe and his light can be a fatal mistake. The Lyktgubbe are believed to be the spirit of lost souls. Often those who died with depths or without burial rites condemned to wander the swamps. They seek to lure others to join them, leading travelers to sink into the bogs where they perish, becoming another wandering soul bound to the marches. These ghostly lights have been documented as far back as the 7th century and sightings are still occurring to this day especially in rural marshlands. Some have tried to capture them or approach closely, but every tale ends with the lights slipping further away into the darkness, leaving the pursuer lost. Whether the mere natural phenomenon or something more, the Lyktgubbe remains a warning to those who stray too far into the night and the marches.
The Elvur or fairies appears as enchanting beings who emerges as dusk. Legends of Elvur can be traced back to the Swedish and Danish folklore of the 15th century. They are tiny, delicate figures clad in shimmering light, often seen dancing in meadows under the moonlight. But despite their beauty, Elvur are not mere spirits. They can be merciless towards those who disturb their gatherings. It's said that those who accidentally stumble into an Elvur dance circle might find themselves trapped forever. The fairies may curse them with sickness, known as Elva Blut, leaving the trespasser forever marked by their wrath. Some locals even leave small offerings, milk or wilder flowers, at the edge of the forest, hoping to appeal to the Elvor to avoid their ire. Some also say that if you stumble upon a fairy dancing in a circle, and you enter it, you will go mad and never leave them and forever be part of the dancing circle. If you wake up in the morning and you find a circle in the grass outside your house, you know that the fairies or the elvor have been there and danced in front of your house. Unlike the playful elvor or fairies, the alver or elves are mysterious and aloof. These forest dwellers, known in tales for the both Iceland and Norway, are taller, with an elegant, ethereal beauty. They live in a hidden realm and keep to themselves, only occasionally crossing paths with humans. If a human does wander into the world, they may experience a time strangely returning to find that years have passed in the human world, though only moments felt like they have passed. In old Icelandic legends, some farmers claim to have met Alver while tending their herds, only to come back to find their families long gone, their children grown up. Sightings today are very rare, but those who experience a strange sense of lost time while being in the forest often wonder, could they have brushed against the world of the Alver? Among the most heart-wrenching figures in Nordic mythology are Mylinger, spirits of children who died without receiving a proper burials. These folklore souls often have tragic pasts, abandoned or forgotten, left without consecrated ground to rest. The mewling is bound by sorrow and vengeance, wandering dark forest and rural areas. Their plaintive cries echoing through the night as they call out for someone to hear them. Restless and tormented, these spirits seek someone to carry them to a holy ground. A seemingly simple task, yet fraught with danger. As one attempts to bear the mewling, the child becomes heavier for each step you take a weight too great for someone to endure. Should they be dropped, the mewling vanishes into the shadows, condemned to roam eternally in search for another willing soul to assist them. In some encounters, the mewling may whisper secrets of their tragic past to those who will listen, seeking not just solace by revenge against those who wronged them in life. The mewling serves as a haunting reminder of society's dark history concerning unwanted children and the consequences of neglect. Their cries often mistaken for the screams of a fox at night are a chilling sound that no one wishes to hear. These echoes of despair 
are believed to originate from the Mulinger, forever searching for closure they never received. In folklore, the Mulinger are often linked to the stories of unwed mothers who in time of desperation might abandon the children. The pain of sorrow of these lost lives manifest in the form of a Mulin, eternally bound to wander the earth, seeking the rest they were denied. Encounters with a Mulin have said to be rare, but the stories linger, a dark cautionary tale about the weight of our past actions and the spirits that linger in the shadows. So, if you find yourself alone in the countryside at night and you hear a haunting cry of a lost child, tread carefully, for it may be a mewling searching for someone to bear its burden a sorrowful reminder of the lost and forgotten and the weight of history that can never truly be laid at rest. In the hills of the remote fields of Sweden and Norway, tales persist of Vitror, the hidden people. Resembling humans in nearly every way, these elusive beings dwell underground, in hidden tunnels and caves, and are said to live centuries-long lives. Their origin traced back to the Norse sagas and early Scandinavian folklore, where they were respected as ancient inhabitants of the land, predating humans by millennia. Sightings often occur at twilight, manifesting as shadow figures that vanishes the moment they are noticed, leaving behind an unsettling aura of mystery. Those who share the land with Vitror know the importance of respecting their hidden homes, farmers offering living offerings of milk, bread or even flowers at the edge of the field as a peace offering. Believing this will keep their families and livestock safe from misfortune, it's not just an act of superstition but a deep-seated tradition rooted in the acknowledgement that these beings possess power beyond human understanding. Many believe that a failure to honor the Vitror can lead to a dire consequences such as illness, crop failure or livestock misfortune. It's considered especially unwise to build or plow over what is known as a Vitror road, ancient pathways said to be frequented by these hidden folk. Disturbing these sacred roots is believed to bring illnesses and misfortune upon one's household. Even today stories persist of strange ailments or shadows appearing at the land, attributed to the Vitru's silent but watchful presence. Farmers might wake up finding their livestock behaving strangely or, or crops wiltering without a reason always attributing these oddities to the displeasure of the hidden people. In many rural communities, the Vitror are not merely seen as a source of fear, but as a guardian of the land. Elders often recount stories of how these beings protect nature and punish those who act thoughtlessly towards the earth. Some families believe that if you treat the land with respect and leave offerings, the Vitro will bless you with a good fortune. In contrast, those who show disregard to the natural world might find themselves facing the wrath of the hidden spirits, leading to a strange happening and inexplainable occurrences. So, as you traverse the hills and fields of Scandinavia, remember that the Vitrul may be watching. With their ancient wisdom and hidden ways, 
They remind us of the delicate balance between humanity and nature. Will you heed their warnings or will you tread carelessly, risking the ire of the hidden people? The choice is yours. In the stillness of night, across Norway and Sweden, a dark spirit known as the Mara can visit, bringing nightmares so vivid that they blur the line between dreams and reality. The Mara is an ancient spirit. Some accounts her to go back to medieval Scandinavian texts, where she is depicted as a fearsome entity with the power to invade the dreams of the unsuspecting. With a form that's shadowy, she slips through the walls and doors, a sinister whisper in the silence of the night. When the Mara descends upon her chosen victim, she sits heavily on their chest causing a sensation of crushing pressure that immobilizes her prey. Many have described the experience as waking up unable to move, their hearts racing as they feel the weight of the spirit pressing down upon them. The term nightmare itself originates from the haunting spirit, emphasizing her terrifying role in folklore. Legends say that Mara preys on those with unresolved fears or anxiety, visiting them when they are the most vulnerable. People believe that if you anger the spirits or the night or carry deep-seated fears, the Mara would be drawn to you, ready to explode your insecurities, to starve of her torment. Locals had their own ways of protecting themselves. It was common to place sharp objects like knives or scissors under their pillows, believing that these items would ward off the spirit. Others would chant protective phrases to carry charms, hoping to keep Mara at bay during the dark hours. The Mara's influence is not just a relic from the past. Stories of her circulate at the modern-day Sweden and Norway where people recount chilling experiences of waking up in a cold sweat, paralyzed by fear and feeling a weight upon their chest, unable to move. These accounts serve as a reminder of how deeply rooted beliefs of the spirits is within Scandinavian culture, merging fear with the uncertainties of sleep and the unknown. So the next time you wake up in a panic, feeling as if something unseen has left its mark on your soul, remember the tale of the Mara. Perhaps she is merely a whisper away, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the moment you close your eyes once more. Will you be ready for her return? Legends of the Bekahes or river whores have haunted Scandinavia since the early 16th century. This enchanting white horse roams the riverbanks, patiently waiting for curious travelers or children to approach. By a serene demeanor and an almost ethereal glow, the Becca Heston appears docile even friendly, allowing people to climb onto its back, inviting them to a false sense of security. But be aware, the moment a person settles onto its back, the creature plunges into the water, trapping them beneath the depth forever. In Tales from Sweden, the Becca Hest is described as impossibly to resist, using a strange charm to lure people to the river. Its allure is so potent that many have succumbed to its call, enchanted by its beauty and the shimmering reflection it casts upon the water. 
Parents often warn their children to avoid rivers alone at dusk, reminding them that a beautiful horse by the water could well be this treacherous creature. This cautionary tale served to instill a sense of respect for nature's hidden danger, illustrating how easily curiosity can lead to peril. The Becca Heston legend is steeped in cultural significance. Many locals recount chilling stories of loved one who disappeared, their fates entwined with the mysterious horse. Some believe that the creature sought not just victims, but also a companion, someone to share its eternal existence beneath the surface. Others claimed it could offer guidance to those lost in wilderness, but only if approached with caution and respect. Yet for those entranced by its beauty, escape is nearly impossible. In some variation of the tale, a small piece of iron, like a nail or a coin, can break the spell, allowing the rider to jump free from its grasp. But the danger is ever present. For those who ignore the warnings and succumb to the allure of the Becca Heston, the river's depth became the grave. Many survivors who have escaped its clutches tell of the lingering chill, an echoing whisper in the water, a reminder of the darkness that lurks beneath the surface. The tales of Becca Heston continue to resonate through generation, a haunting reminder of the fine line between enchantment and danger, urging us to remember that some beauties are best admired from afar. So next time you find yourself near the river at dusk, heed the whisper of the past. For in the mist and shadows, the Becca Heston may be waiting, ever watchful, ever ready to draw you into a watery embrace. Among the most disturbing legends in Nordic folklore is that of Bortbyting or Changeling. Rooted in the ancient belief from Sweden and Norway, the Bortbyting is a product of a supernatural switch. Legend has it that trolls or even elves will sometimes sneak into a human home and swap a healthy child with their own. A sickly, often strange looking creature left in the crib in a place of the human infant. Changelings were said to bring bad luck, illnesses and sorrow to their new families. Parents would watch for signs, a sudden change in personality, old behaviors or an unusual appearance. In some places, folklore suggested that exposing the changeling to the fire or water would cause the trolls to take it back and return the human child. Thankfully, such beliefs have faded, yet stories of eerie-looking children in old cottages continues to unnerve travelers, whispering of these swaps in isolated parts of Scandinavia. These are just a few of the countless creatures that haunt the forests, rivers and mountains of Scandinavia, ancient beings that once shaped the beliefs and fear of the Nordic people. Respect the wilds, and perhaps these spirits will leave you in peace. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the myth and legends of the Nordic world. Until next time, keep an ear out for the whispers of the wind and tread carefully in the autumn 